Okay, you read uh, an article of the history of the first temple, that is the temple built by Solomon. So what are some of the things that uh, either surprised you, that you didn't know before, or you thought were important as uh, you read this article? John, how many kings turned away from God? No, yeah. That's pretty sad, isn't it? We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Mia? Um, I just thought it was cool that they described it as one on one place. Um, and that was more like a habitation of the dwelling place. Yeah, it was considered where God was. Yeah, it's habitation. Although we know God is everywhere, but there's something special about the temple. Stephen? It lasted 375 years. Okay, so that's a long time. What else? All right, we'll be talking about some of the things that you read in the article as we proceed with the history of Israel. Uh, now, we start with uh, Israel coming into the land of Canaan, and they were led by whom, everybody? Led by whom into the land? Moses. No. Moses never went in the land. Joshua. Uh, after Joshua died, what was that period called? Time of the what were they called? These people that showed up and drove enemies out of Israel. Whenever they had been disobedient, God allowed some enemies to come in. Who were those people? It seems like there should have been a book named after them. What? Judges. The judges. Huh. Okay, I guess there was a book named after them. It's during the time of the judges. And during that time, or at the end of that time period, uh, the people said to Samuel, the last judge, uh, we want what? A king. A king. And so uh, God relented, gave them a king. Who was the first king Saul. of Israel? Everybody? Saul. 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 Not Solomon. Saul. Saul. Yes. Yes. Are you just repeating what I say? No. I Saul is the first king. But Saul was disobedient, so God took the kingdom away from him and gave it to whom? David. David, uh, David then was followed by his son, Solomon. Solomon. When Solomon died, however, uh, because of uh, the heavy taxation, in part, was, it was a big part of what caused a problem. Uh, when, when the death of Solomon occurred. Uh, Solomon's son uh, was Rehoboam, and he was supposed to take over. I'll get his name up here, Rehoboam. Uh, but when Rehoboam became king, uh, the people petitioned him to reduce the heavy tax load that had been instituted by his father Solomon. Well, he consulted with the elders. Good thing to do, right? Consult the wise elders. And they agreed. But he also consulted with his friends. How many of you know that sometimes friends can lead you astray? Maybe you don't know that person. Hope you don't know that person. But that does happen. Well, his friends said, no, 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 no. Don't reduce taxes. You've got to show them who's boss. You should raise taxes just so they know you're in control. And so he did. Well, that caused rebellion against Rehoboam, which was led by Solomon's former advisor, Jeroboam. Jeroboam had uh, also advised King Solomon to lower taxes, and Solomon did not listen to his advice. So when Rehoboam came along and raised him even more, Jeroboam led a revolt and uh, caused ten northern tribes to separate from the southern two and to form the nation of Israel with its capital in Samaria. 
So here we see the nation of Israel. The ten northern tribes occupy this territory. Their capital is in Samaria. And that leaves the kingdom of Judah, which also included the tribe of Benjamin. But it was so small, they just called it all Judah, with the capital of Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to try to give you a way to remember this, because I do want you to remember this. Uh, and that's to think alphabetically. So usually when we're going uh, vertically, we go top to the bottom, right? So I comes before J. So Israel is here in the north, Judah in the south. All right, got it so far? Uh, the uh, king of Israel, the northern kingdom, was Jeroboam, which sounds just like the king of the southern kingdom of Judah, who is Rehoboam. J comes before R. J is on the top, R is on the bottom. Jeroboam, Rehoboam. Now, it doesn't work when we get to the capitals. Sorry. You have to come up with a different way of remembering that. Samaria is the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Jerusalem is the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah. All right? So you got the picture of the uh, two kingdoms now. It's called the divided kingdom. When we have Israel in the north, and the ten tribes, and the southern nation of Judah in the south. Now, in the southern nation of Judah, we've got... Uh, Rehoboam is the king, and he is the son of Solomon, and, and it continues on to be in the line of David. The, the kings of the southern kingdom of Judah are and, uh, descendants of King David up until the end. Now, in the northern kingdom, we've got Jeroboam. He's not related to David, and so there's no Davidic line there, and we'll find that there's going to be a lot of different families that are going to rule from time to time in the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, one of the things we can look at as we look at the uh, list of kings here, first in uh, Judah, uh, alongside the names of each of the kings is a letter. E stands for evil, and G stands for good. So primarily it tells us who is a good king, who is an evil king. Now, what do you notice about this list? What do you notice? Lots of evil kings. Lots of evil kings. Yeah. And uh, you notice especially towards the end, can you see why God brought judgment on the kingdom of Judah? If you just look at the kings, you can see why, right? There's one good one here, but evil before and many after. Anything else you uh, notice? There's a good slash bad. Pardon me? There's a good slash bad. A good slash bad, bad right here. Joe Ash? So what does that tell you? That uh, he was doing that one thing and then trying to do that. Right. Okay, so that's the southern kingdom of Judah. We had some good kings, some evil kings, and towards the end they were all evil kings. Now look at the northern kingdom of Israel, which is not from the line of David. Um, why do you suppose we don't have any letters out here? Any any thought? So why we don't have any G's or E's? They might be all good. They might be. Or all bad. They might be all evil. There's no point in putting an E all the way down here, and because that's what they were. Every one of them was evil. And you can see they lasted 19 kings. Uh, Judah lasted 20, but this is a longer time period because some of these kings don't last a long time because they got assassinated. They were killed, and so somebody else took over a different family. We'll talk about some of that. Uh, so uh, finally we see that they were defeated and taken captive by the Assyrians in 722. All right, so that's the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, this uh, slide shows us the kings side by side. The kingdom of Judah showing 20 kings. Uh, the kingdom of Israel, this one's also showing uh, 20 kings. Um, because uh, 
on this one, let's see, who are we skipping? Skipping somebody here. Uh, any other little list? Uh, so there are 44 kings all together. If uh, you consider uh, Jesus as king of Israel and Judah both, because he's through, he has uh, ancestors in, in both lines. Uh, here we have the, the uh, prophets. Uh, here are the prophets before Israel's captivity. So when you hear about the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, Jonah, Joel, Amos, Hosea, Isaiah, Micah, these are prophets that are trying to get Israel to return to God. After they're taken captive by the Assyrians, we have these prophets, Nahum, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, and Jeremiah. And they are trying to uh, uh, to get the message out to uh, Israelites and those in Judah to, to turn to God. The prophets after Judah's captivity. So once uh, Judah is captured and taken to Babylon, we have the, the prophets Daniel, Ezekiel, Obadiah, Ezra, uh, Zechariah, should be a C there, uh, Haggai, Esther, Nehemiah, and Malachi. And then John the Baptist is the final prophet of the Old Testament. Uh, 400 years later. And of course, he's the cousin of uh, Jesus Christ. So we have 44 kings total and 22 prophets total. Kind of interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have. Here's the uh, last of the, uh, the judges, and he's also considered a prophet anointing Israel's first king. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about... Uh, some of these uh, kings, we're not going to be able to hit them all, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about uh, some of what happened. Uh, when uh, Jeroboam left, the, took the ten tribes of Israel and established another kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, uh, one of the problems he faced was that the temple is in Jerusalem. Why would that be a problem for Jeroboam, that the temple is in Jerusalem? Think about why that would be a problem for him. What do you think, Zach? The spirit of them is king of Israel and uh, Jerusalem is uh, Judah. Yeah. So why? So what? Why would he? Why would he care about that? John, what do you think? They can't worship. Pardon me? They can't worship. Why not? Because that's the place where you worship the temple. Well, couldn't they go on down to Jerusalem anyway? No, they would probably get killed. Um, I, I'm not sure that the Judeans would kill them. But Jeroboam might be concerned that if his people are all going down to Jerusalem to worship at the temple, to do all the things that they're supposed to do there, that they might start thinking about why are we separated and want to rejoin. He wants to keep them separated from Judah. And so what he does is he sets up our rival places of worship for the people of Israel. So they do, they do not need to go to Jerusalem. He sets up uh, some bull gods. I remind you of what Aaron constructed, remember? The golden calf or the golden bull. Well, he sets up two golden bull gods, set up a festival, attempted to change the calendar, and he set up his own non levitical priests. And he set up these gods in two places, Samaria, which is the capital, and Bethel. Now, this is interesting enough. This has a, a history. This is where Jacob uh, uh, had his dream of, uh, it was called Jacob's Ladder. Uh, it's an important place. It means house of God. So that would be a great place to, to, uh, to worship. But also on the way. So anybody that was thinking about going to Jerusalem, they'd be passing by Bethel, I suppose. And uh, they, maybe they had people out there, no, oh, just come to Bethel. Don't go all the way down to Jerusalem. Come here. So anyway, he sets up these uh, places. And uh, there's some interesting things that happen along the line uh, after Jeroboam sets that up. All right, I want to move ahead to what's happening in, uh, in history uh, along this time. Uh, in Egypt, we have a pharaoh called Shishak. I think we mentioned him, didn't really say anything about him. Uh, he invaded Israel and forced Rehoboam to yield a tremendous amount of tribute to him. In uh, 1 Kings 14, it says, In the fifth year of Rehoboam, uh, Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem. I said invaded Israel. I should have said Judah. 
So Shishak invades Judah uh, on the Rehoboam. Uh, he carried off treasures of the temple and treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, including all the gold shields that Solomon had made. Second Chronicles 12 adds some more details. It says, with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen and innumerable troops of Libyans, Succites, which are mercenary Libyan soldiers, and Cushites from Upper Egypt, that came with him from Egypt, he captured the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. And there are inscriptions on, of this on the wall of the Temple of Ammon in Karnak. Now, in 1 Kings 16, we find the rise of a king called uh, Omni. Omri, I'm sorry, uh, right here. Uh, for some time, uh, there was a city that was occupied by Levites, and it was on the border of Philistia, and it was a, a place of contention. Uh, and uh, at this point, Zimri uh, revolts against Elah. If you notice that some of these are bolder print, that means a new family has come in. Uh, so Zimri uh, revolts against uh, Elah. And uh, at that time, Omri was a... Uh, uh, had uh, troops under him, and when they heard about that, then uh, Omri uh, was elected as the commander of uh, the, the troops that, that he was with, and uh, went to Tirzah, which at that time was functioning as the capital of Israel, besieged and conquered it. So after a period of civil war, uh, Omri was able to secure, secure the kingdom for himself. So we've got one king killing another and then becoming the next king. So it's a lot of turmoil in the northern kingdom of Israel. Uh, Omri stabilized the kingdom, however, and uh, strengthened it against Aram, sometimes called Syria. And he built the city of Samaria as a strategic place and moved the capital there. Uh, he renewed a treaty with Tyre. Now Tyre is up here, and so that's a, uh, a place that uh, they want to be friends with. And also, Tyre is, of course, a big seaport. Uh, so uh, Omri wants to establish a relationship with them. And how do you do that back in those days? How do you establish a relationship with another country? How do you have a treaty with them? What, what do you, uh, how do you uh, solidify that? We've seen this before. Marriage? Yeah, through marriage. So what does Omri do? He marries his son Ahab, who will be the next king, to a princess of a Tyre, a Phoenician by the name of Jezebel. You ever heard of Jezebel? Yeah. Well, relations with Judah were improved for a time through the marriage um, that has taken place. Now, so Ahab of Jerusalem is married to Jezebel of uh, actually, she's from the city of Sidon, but Phoenicia, uh, up a little further. Uh, and she brought with her her Baal worship. Uh, in various archaeological expeditions in Palestine, a great deal of evidence in the form of seals and inscriptions on pottery fragments has turned up with the name Baal. It appears in the personal names of people who live in the northern kingdom. The fact that Jewish parents were naming their children after false gods like Baal shows what a great impact Baal worship had upon the land of Israel introduced by Jezebel. So she turned the country to worshiping Baal. And here's a, a seal of hers. You can uh, recognize some of the inscriptions on the seal look rather Egyptian. Now this leads to a a showdown. Uh, who was the prophet that was proclaiming to people they need to repent and turn from Baal to the one true God, Yahweh? You know who that prophet was? He told Ahab, God's going to bring judgment on Israel by causing it to not rain for three and a half years. And it didn't. Well, that also affected the prophet. 
because um, he didn't have any water either or any food. So he went uh, to a pot of brook and he went to live there by this brook of water and he didn't have any food and ravens brought food to him. You know what it is yet? But then the brook dried up and so he went somewhere else and he went to uh, Zarephath and he found there a widow who was not an Israelite, not Jewish, who uh, had a son and uh, uh, this prophet came to her and said, I want you to make me something to eat. And she said, I just have enough oil and flour left to make one cake for my son and I, and we're going to eat it, and then we're going to die because there's nothing more. And this prophet, got his name yet? Elijah. Elijah said, make it for me. And she somehow trusted him enough to do that. She made him a case. And then what happened? Every time she went to make more food, what happened? Hmm? Uh, Take your hand away from your mouth like you did. The oil was full and uh, flour just keep on leaking. Yeah, every time she went to get some flour, there was more there. Every time she got more oil, there was more oil there. It kept going all the time that this famine was, was uh, proceeding. Well, then Elijah eventually uh, goes to confront Ahab once again. He finds him. Uh, Ahab accused Elijah of being, the one, of being the one that troubles Israel, bringing trouble to Israel. In reality, who was it that was bringing trouble to Israel? Yes. Ahab. Uh, and so uh, Elijah arranges for a contest between the prophets of Baal and himself. Do you remember, do you remember this? Yeah. Uh, where does it take place? Do you remember? Do you recall? Um, a, Elijah tested the priest of Baal. Whoever, whose God can rain down fire right. is the real God. Yeah. And for like, I don't know how long they prayed and stuff. It was all day long. And then Elijah called God and he rained fire. Yeah, I remember the prophets were crying out to, the, to Baal. I think I, I mentioned this before to you that. Uh, what they went through and uh, cutting themselves and screaming and crying and doing all kinds of things to get Baal's attention. And Elijah was mocking them. Oh, maybe he's away. He's on vacation. Uh, maybe he's relieving himself. Uh, you know, all those things because, you know, there were a lot of stories about Baal that may not be not too bright anyway. But nothing happened. So Elijah then calls upon God, just like John said, God sent down fire, which not only set the sacrifice on fire, but lapped up all the water that they had poured around the altar. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, the people then recognized that Yahweh is the true God. Uh, and uh, then Elijah proceeded to kill the 400 prophets of Baal that were there. <clears throat> and then uh, God sent rain. And we'll go through the, all the details of what happened there, but uh, it began to rain. Elijah ran down the mountain. Uh, uh, Ahab was in his chariot, and Elijah beat him down the mountain, running. And that was the end of the contest uh, on Mount Carmel. But well, something happened to Elijah when he got to the bottom, or when he, when he uh, <clears throat> was finished with uh, that whole thing. Uh, does anybody know what happened? Um, he started running again. He just loved to run. He was a cross-country runner. Why did he run again? Because word got to him that Jezebel had heard what he had done, and, and Jezebel said that she was going to kill Elijah. He had just killed 400 prophets. He had seen God send fire down from heaven, and now he's afraid of one woman. Amazing, isn't it? So he ran all the way down to Mount Sinai. And God provided for him there too and gave him a lesson. Uh, you may remember that when uh, Elijah was in a cave there, <clears throat> that God uh, sent an earthquake uh, and he sent a fire. And, uh, but God was not in the earthquake, he was not in the fire. And then God spoke to him in a still small voice. And God was in the voice. And, uh, so Elijah. 
uh, learned to depend upon God. He was uh, depressed, he wanted to die, but God <clears throat> brought him back to reality. All right, so uh, this is how things proceed during these uh, this divided kingdom. Israel has one evil king after another. They have lots of prophets that come to them, and uh, the people do not turn. Uh, now, on Mount Carmel, the people there said, yeah, we'll follow Yahweh, but that didn't last very long. Go back to here. <clears throat> uh, the relations between the two nations were sometimes okay. A lot of times uh, there was antagonism between the two. If we look at uh, Jehoshaphat, the fourth king of Judah, uh, he introduced a period of close relationship between the two countries through marriage. They, there was marriage between the royal families. They adopted the same names for their children. They visited with each other. They made joint ventures in foreign trade. So there was some periods of cooperation <clears throat> between the two. However, there are also times when uh, the king of Israel would uh, ally himself with another country against Judah. Uh, and uh, those were, uh, were times in which usually both sides were being disobedient to God. All right, so we have the, the two kingdoms. We want to make sure we remember what they are. We have Israel, the northern kingdom. Ten tribes. We have Judah, the southern kingdom, along with Benjamin, makes two tribes. Capital of Israel is Samaria. The capital of Judah is Jerusalem. The first king of Israel, remember? Jeroboam, first king of Judah, Rehoboam. The kings of Judah in the line of David are a mixture of evil and good. The kings of Israel, not related to David, are all they're all bad, they're all evil, right? Okay, so now you got the, the overall picture of the time of the divided kingdom. Now, the next time we are going to be looking at the rise of a nation that is going to be used by God to bring judgment on that northern kingdom of Israel uh, because they have gone into idolatry, because they've been worshiping Baal, because they've refused to return to him. Anyone know the name of that nation? Assyria. Assyria. All right, so uh, your assignment for uh, tomorrow is uh, simply to look over the section review on page 39. You don't need to uh, write out any answers, but look over that and make sure that you can come up with answers and use that to review the material that we have been looking at. All right, and uh, once I went, let's, uh, we have time, maybe we can do that together. Let's look at page 39, uh, because I want us to have a quiz tomorrow over the land of Canaan that we've looked at so far. <clears throat> Okay, so we look at question number one on page 39, and uh, let, let's see, don't anyone shout out any answers, think about it, let's see if we get everybody to uh, think about the answers here. Alright, three civilizations that the Hebrew people encountered as they entered the promised land. Alright, can you think of three different peoples that were encountered in the promised land? Here were three different tribes that were there when the Israelites arrived. Okay. Can you think of one, Noah? Um, the Hittites. The Hittites. Okay, that would be one. Can you think of another one, Amelia? Um. Can't think of any? John? John? 
Well, the Canaanite was uh, a term used for anybody living in that area. So that could refer to a lot of different tribes, although there were people specifically that were descendants of Canaan. But generally that's uh, just used for anybody living there. Zach, you got one? Moabites. Uh, Moabites lived over here. Talk about people that actually lived in the land. So what you're seeing here, Ammonites, Edomites, those are outside the land. Who are the, the people whose language became the language of uh, the area because they controlled all their trade routes? Yeah. Well, the Phoenicians were there also. We have the Phoenicians that are also infiltrating down into here. Um, but there's another one whose language was spoken up through the time of Jesus. It's called the Aramaeans. And we call the language Aramaic. Similar to Hebrew. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, two major weapons the Hittites used as they expanded their empire. What did the Hittites use? Or what did they have control? What did they invent? Metal weapons. Especially iron. Iron weapons they used. And also, I'm not sure if we talked about them in relationship to this, but they also used iron to make chariots. So, iron tip weapons and chariots. Uh, let's see, the two valuable natural resources that brought wealth to the Phoenicians. The two natural resources. Give me one. Well, what's the what's the product? Purple dye. Purple dye. And what's another one? Timber. Timber, right, from uh, Lebanon. Okay, what language served as a go-between or international language among the people of the Florida Crescent? I just gave you this answer a minute ago. What was the language that people spoke from Mesopotamia on over into Palestine? Yeah, Aramaic. And number five, uh, what is a theocracy? How would you define theocracy, Stephen? Exactly. Right. Government directed by God. Okay. Uh, make sure you know those things and uh, look over your notes to uh, and uh, look over the other items that we covered as well. We'll have a quiz over Canaan, the land of Canaan, uh, the promised land, tomorrow.